Good morning. A blessing it is to be here today. If you're visiting with us, we want to welcome you and, and want to thank you for being with us this morning. If you are visiting, there's visitor cards in front of you, in the pew in front of you. If you at this at this time or during this time, uh, fill those out. And when, we, uh, when the collection plate comes around, drop those in there. So that way we have a record of your attendance. And that way we know that you're with us. And if you also will, stay after a little bit. So that way you can get to know us better and we can get to know you as well. Man, this has been such a beautiful weekend outside, has it not? It's been so beautiful. It's been, but you know, when I think about the highlight of the weekend, I really, you know, today's the first day of the week, but for most of us in our calendars, it's the weekend. Uh, but when I think about the highlight of the weekend, uh, really being here with our brothers and sisters, getting to worship our God, getting to, getting to sing songs and hymns that are devoted to him on high, and just being able to be refreshed, to be restored, to know that I have a Savior who lives and who loves me dearly. It's such a blessing to be here today. You know, I was reading this story this week, and it was, it was about this, uh, this, this photographer who went to this elementary school, and he was doing, you know, picture day. If you remember what picture day was like, I have a few bad ones. Um, but, you know, you remember what picture day was like when you, were, when you were a kid. And this photographer, he goes to this elementary school, and he has the first graders there coming to him. And to kind of put them at ease, he asks them questions. You know, make small talk with them. He asks them things like, you know, what's your favorite color? Uh, you know, what, what, what's your favorite cartoon? Things like that. He even asks them, like, what, what do you want to be when you grow up? What will you be when you grow up? And so, you know, some of them say, you know, I want to be a, I want to be a cowboy. I want to be a doctor. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be all these different things. Finally, this little girl comes up and she sits, she sits in front of him and he says, what are you, what are you going to be when you grow up? She says, I'm going to be tired. And, you know, I, I heard that and I said, little girl, you, you ain't joking, but you know, you, you, you have no idea. And some of you are probably sitting here right now saying, preacher, you ain't have no idea. But I, I want us to think about that. You know, when we think about our, our daily schedules, when we think about our routines, when we think about the things that we go through week in and week out, our weeks can be exhausting, right? Maybe you've had an exhausting week this past week, but that kind of is a part of life. You know, you work, you know, you do what you, you know, you do what you need to do to be a good steward, to be a good servant. You do those things and, and, and it can be exhausting. And sometimes that exhaustion feels good. Sometimes it, it's, you know, you get home, you're tired, you want to sit down, you maybe watch the game, maybe spend some time with your family, maybe read the scriptures and, and you feel and you feel refreshed again and then you're ready to do it the next day. In some cases, you know, depending on the week. But then I also thought about those who are spiritually tired. Those who are spiritually exhausted. Those who are burdened. Those who are broken. Those who are hurting. Those who, man, you ever, you ever felt so tired of things that are going on in life, sin, the hurt that's in this world, maybe things you see on TV, maybe things that are going on in your own personal life, and they just almost exhaust you. They cause you to feel tired. I mean, just ask the person last night who was probably sitting up at the ER awaiting some bad news. Ask the person who has to go into work tomorrow and is afraid because of cutbacks. You think about various things that are going on in people's lives, and there are people that are just emotionally spiritually exhausted. And if that's you this morning, you may feel the same way. You may feel exhausted. You may feel tired. You may feel burned out, feeling like there's this huge weight that's been placed upon you and you can't seem to remove it. And no matter what you do, no matter what kind of help you try to find, no matter what plan you make, it always seems to stay there. Well, let me tell you something about that burden. There is a God sitting up in heaven who wants to remove it. There is a God up in heaven who says, give it to me, and in exchange, I will give you rest. You know, we've been looking at paradoxes these last several weeks. We've been looking at uh, various paradoxes in scripture. We've been looking at, you know, strength in the midst of weakness. And what I mean by paradoxes is things that don't seem like they should go together. You get what I mean? Things that don't seem like, like they make sense, like strength and weakness, healing and brokenness. You know, th those are the type of things that oftentimes when our world associates, they don't associate brokenness with being fixed again. They don't associate those things that way. Or they try to find different ways of, of healing. But the Bible's full of different paradoxes, and we're actually concluding our series this morning on rest found in a yoke. That's a paradox. 
Because when you get the image of a yoke, you know, you get the image of, of an ox team and they're carrying this burden. They've got a yoke that's helping them to support that. And you think to yourself, how can you find rest in that? Turn your Bibles, if you will, to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. This is a passage that was read to us this morning. Uh, in Matthew chapter 11, we'll begin reading in verse 27. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 27. And Jesus is talking to his disciples and he says here in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 27, All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Okay, so when we think about this for a second, Jesus is saying, he, he, wants, he wants the people that are listening to him, his disciples, to remember this. Look, I have this deep, intimate relationship with my Father that nobody outside of me has. You know, this, this word knows implies this intimate relationship of a parent and a child. And he's saying, look, I have that. I know my father. My father knows me. And we are so close. We're one person. My father and I are one. How many times does Jesus talk about that? He and his father. He and his father, this close relationship with, that they have. You remember when Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane before his crucifixion? Mark's account talks about how he cries out, to his father, and he, and he doesn't use he doesn't use the formality, the formal uh, Aramaic word for father. He uses the affectionate word Abba, and he says Abba, Father. He cries out to his father because that's the relationship that he has with him. He knows that he can go to him. He knows that he can talk to him. He knows that he has his comfort. He knows that he can find rest in his father. My father and I, we are one, and no one knows the father like the way I do. Because I've been with him since the beginning. It's kind of random, you know, pointing this out. This seems random, but then Jesus goes on. We'll look at verse 28. And he says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, here's what's interesting about this. Jesus starts us off by saying, look, I know my father. My father knows me. We have this relationship that no one else has, but the word come there implies an open invitation. He's saying, but I want you to have that same relationship. The relationship that me and my father have, I want you to have the exact same relationship with him. I want you to be in this relationship. Come to me, all you that are weary, and heavy laden. Come to me, everyone. This is a person, Jesus, who is always available and is making himself available for every single person on the face of the earth. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. Now, I want to look at those words, weary and heavy laden. What exactly that means? What does it mean to be weary? What does it mean to be heavy laden? You know, in verse 28, he says, come to me all who labor. My translation says labor. And it means outright exhaustion, both spiritually or it could be physically. Come to me all you who are tired. Come to me all who are absolutely exhausted and you feel like your spiritual energy is spent. Come to me all who feel like they can't press on any further because the burden which you carry in life without Jesus, you can't carry on without him. And he's saying, look, me and my father, we have this great relationship. Jesus says, look, I'm going to go through things in my life. I, I am going through things in my life. I'm going to suffer. I am suffering. I'm going to have periods in my life where it feels like I'm alone, but I know I'm not because of the way the relationship I have with me and my father is. But I want you to have the same thing. I want you to have the exact same thing Jesus says, come to me, all you that are tired, all you that are spent because of the heavy burden, heavy laden. This word, this burden is like an ox or a donkey carrying a load, a heavy load. He's saying, look, come to me, all you that are weary. Why? Because you have this burden. And I want us to think about this, okay? We have this person, this individual who is making himself available. We have this person, Jesus Christ, who says, look, you can come to me. You can come to me. I know what you're going through. I know what sin is like. I see it in your lives. I know what you're struggling with. Nobody else in the room, nobody else in your family, nobody else at work may know what you're going through because of sin, but I know it so deeply. 
I'm not saying me, Paul, though, God, by the way. I'm saying Jesus does. I don't, I don't know everything that everyone, if I'm saying I, I'm speaking in first person as Jesus. So forgive me. Jesus is saying that. And Jesus is looking at your life and he says, look, I, I see what's going on. I see the hurt that you may be experiencing. I see the spiritual darkness you may be going through. Let me lift that from you. This burden that he talks about, given the context of, 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 his, of this section that he's in chapter 11, as well as in chapter 12, he's talking about sin. Because honestly, if there's any burden that you and I have, you may think of various different things in my life, man. There's work, there's family problems, there's all these things. But at the root of every burden that we have in life, every burden that's just impossible for us to bear, Jesus says the, the, the biggest burden that you have in your life is sin. He said, the biggest burden that you have in your life, the hardest thing for you to carry, the hardest thing for you to deal with, the thing that you can't carry on your own is sin. And it causes you to be exhausted. It causes you to feel spiritually empty and destitute. And he says, look, this is, this is why you're tired. This is why you're exhausted. Man, ask Adam and Eve. We talked a little bit about that in our Bible class this morning. Eric, when we were talking about 2 Timothy, we kind of looked a little bit back in you know, the time of Noah. We looked at Adam and Eve and sin. You think about Adam and Eve. Man, sin is brutal. Just ask Cain and Abel. Sin is brutal. And you think about Noah and you think about the flood. Ask Jeremiah the prophet who preached 50 years to a nation that refused to repent. And he saw the sin. He saw what it was doing to them. He saw how it was breaking them apart from the image that God has always intended from the beginning. Man, sin is brutal. As a matter of fact, there's a passage in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15 that says the way of the sinful, the way of the treacherous, the way of people who engage in sin is ruin. Because there's no gain in it. There's nothing but burden. And Jesus says, this is, this is an open invitation to those who are so consumed by sin, who are so consumed by the, by, by the burdens of sin, who are so consumed by the struggle that sins bring in their lives. And he says, bring it to me. I can carry that. That's what I came here to do, to carry that for you. You know, I get that image of Jesus carrying the cross, right? You get that image when you think of Jesus carrying anything. You get that image of Jesus on the cross. Let me tell you about a cross beam. The cross beam, you know, we always get this image uh, of, you know, they, they usually assembled it in two parts. The beam alone, the cross beam in which Jesus, you know, his arms were asphyxiated to, it weighed roughly about 100 pounds. And if you were an individual that carried that, you, you carried that all through the streets uh, from, from, from the place of your trial to the place of your execution. And I get that image. And in that image, you know, Jesus is not just carrying his own, this wooden burden, but he's carrying all the burdens of every single person who has ever existed, all the sinful burdens, because sin is brutal. You have the Savior, this Jesus Christ, who's saying, look, uh, me and my father, we've got this great relationship. I want you to have the same, but you've got this burden in your life that, that, that's hindering you from coming to me. You've got this thing that's hindering you from having a relationship with me. You have this thing that's hindering you from being where God has always intended for you to be from before the foundation of the world. Give it to me. And the verse says here, he says, and I will give you rest. Literally, he doesn't say, I will give you something else to rescue. No, Jesus says, I will rescue you. I'm the source of your rest. He doesn't say, here, let me, give you, let me give you something else. He says, no, let me turn you over to somebody else. Come to me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and Jesus will be your rest. Jesus will rest you. You know, we look at this. Jesus saying this, you know, we, we look at this, you've got this person who's making himself available. You've got this individual who is saying, come to me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, because man, sin is brutal and sin hurts and sin has caused so much pain in this world. But he says, if you come to me, and you bring that, I will give you rest because rest is possible with Jesus. You know, we think about various scriptures. You know, I, I think about what Jesus had to say in John chapter 14. If you will turn there in your Bibles, 
to John chapter 14 and verse 1. John chapter 14 and verse 1, and Jesus says this, he says this to his disciples, he says, Let not your hearts be troubled, believe in God, believe also in me. In other words, man, when you have Jesus, peace is possible, rest is possible. This word rest, like we said, it, it, you know, Jesus is saying, I will rest you. It, it means to be refreshed. It means to be restored. It means to be revived again. It's almost like, you know, you, you get them working out or you've done some physical labor and, and you get this, you finally get some sort of alleviation from that, whether it's icy hot or, or, it's, or it's a glass of water or something. It alleviates you. And Jesus says, let me do this for you eternally. Let me give you rest because the burden that you carry, you can never take it off and you can never give it to somebody else and you can never make it lighter. That burden of sin, the only way that you can have it off of you, the only way that you can, I can the only way that that burden can be lifted up is if you come to me and I will refresh you. I will revive you. I will give you the strength to carry on. He continues on in this passage and he says, take my yoke upon you. Remember that imagery of an ox team, this yoke, this yoke that what they used to, to keep them together as well as to be able to bear the, the weight of the burden. He says, look, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I think this is interesting because Jesus is saying, come to me and learn from me. He's saying, come to me and your life is going to be changed forever. He's saying, I, when, I, when I say rest, it doesn't mean I'm going to make your life easy. I'm going to make your life, you know, this, this life that there's no, there's no more, there's no more, uh, phys, you know, there's no more work. There's nothing like that. He says, but if you come to me spiritually, the thing in which burdens you the most, I will rest you. I will revive you. I will give you the strength to carry on. And he says here, take my yoke. Take what I have to offer. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn to imitate me. Not just hear what I have to say, but learn from me. You're going to be shaped into the image by the yoke that Jesus gives you. And he says, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And let's be realistic. Gentle, lowly in heart. That's the opposite of the burden of sin. The burden of sin is brutal. Jesus is gentle. The burden of sin hurts. The burden of sin afflicts. The burden of sin causes so much pain. Jesus is gentle and lowly in heart. And Jesus says, give me, give me your burden. In exchange, I'm going to give you something else. But what I give you is gentle. And what I give you is lowly in heart. What I give you, you can carry. You can carry. And you're not carrying it alone. You know, Jesus continues on and he says, take my yoke. We read again, verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest, refreshment, reviving for your souls, for my yoke is easy. In other words, my yoke is this balanced scale. And on God doesn't, this is the thing I want you to understand. When you come to Jesus, he doesn't put your past on one end of that scale. And he doesn't put what people expect of you to be on the other end of the scale. He gives you his yoke. And he says, this is what you're going to be like. If you come to me, I will transform you. I will change your heart. I will break down just like the way Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 8 says that God desires to do. I will break down the stone in your heart and make it tender again. I'll make it soft. I'll make you compassionate. I will shape you into the image of me. But you got to come to me. He says, for my, he goes, he goes on and he says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, here's the thing. Sin will cause you to come to the point where you're burdened and remain just absolutely burdened. But he has the power to take that away. He has the power to do that. You know, I, I've said this before. When you come here, Jesus, Jesus wants you, you know, you, you, you hear people say, come as you are. Jesus wants you to come as you are, but he doesn't want to leave you that way. He wants to make you better. He wants to make you stronger. 
He wants to make you love deeper. He wants to make you see people with a different lens. He wants to, he wants to shape you into his image because he is gentle and lowly in heart and he can make you the same way. That's hard to think about, right? Because you think about the burden that we bear, the burden that, if you're a Christian, the burden that you once bore of sin, that, that burden that you can't take off yourself. And yet Jesus says, look, give that to me. Stop trying to do it on your own. Stop trying to carry this weight on your own. You can't do it. Remember when I was first researching about this topic, I ran across a story about this farmer who had this team of oxen out in a field and one oxen was smaller, the other ox was bigger. And somebody, a passerby, said, why? That's weird looking. You know, you got this small ox, you got this bigger ox. And the farmer said to him, he's like, look, he said, you see the smaller ox over here? And the farmer said, well, or excuse me, the passerby said, uh, yeah, yeah, I see the small ox. That's why I stopped. It's weird. He said, you see the smaller ox. He said, you notice the way the, way the yoke is fixated on him? He said, here's the thing. He hasn't been broken in yet. He's still learning. Yeah, he's not as strong as this ox. But that's why this ox is here. This ox actually carries all the burden, the majority of the burden. And what this ox has to carry is nothing compared to what he has to carry. But it's helping him and it's making him stronger. And over time, he becomes a big ox himself. You know, that's what Jesus does for you. That's what Jesus does for me. Jesus says, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this with you. My burden is easy. The burden that you bear is not. Give it to me. Give me all the weight. Give me all that trouble. Give me all those things. I'm fully equipped and strong enough to handle it. You're not. Give it to me and I will give you something you can handle. The only expectation that God requires of you to be is to imitate me. You know, we look at that. We're like, yeah, but Jesus, that's kind of hard. He said, it's not as hard as the burden that you once bore. You ever thought about it that way? Following Jesus is not, and that's the thing. Jesus isn't saying, I'm going to remove all yokes. I'm going to remove all these things. He's saying, no, I'm still going to give you a yoke. I'm still going to give you something, but it's restful compared to what you once had. Let me tell you, if you've ever been on a treadmill and, you know, I, I, you know, whenever I do a workout on the treadmill, I have an incline, a really high incline. The best is when you're doing a cool down and, you, you know, you feel like, man, you know, you got like three minutes left, but it's not at that same incline and it's not at the same speed. And it's just, you know, you're starting to unwind down and you start to feel, even if you're still working, you know, I mean, you're still walking, you're still moving, but it feels better than the burden that you once had. You get what I'm saying? It feels a whole lot better. And Jesus is saying, look, he's like, I'm still going to give you something. I'm still going to give you something because without anything, you can't be transformed into what God wants you to be. You can't be transformed into what God has designed you to be. He said, I'm still giving you something, but what I'm giving you is far greater and far more easier than trying to bear, try to bear your sins on your own. Give that to me and I'll carry your cross. I will carry that. Now, we look at that. We, th we think about what Jesus says here. We think about this passage. And as we, as we think about everything that, that Jesus wants his disciples to remember, you know, the message that Jesus gave the broken, the hurting, the sorrowful, the suffering 2,000 years ago is the same message that he gives you and me today. And his arms reach down to the fallen and the destitute. And he says, come to me, learn from me. You know, to those, to those who this burden, man, the burden of sin is too much for us to bear. Let Jesus take it from you and have a life of rest and restoration in imitating him. You know, there are those who don't know him. And Jesus wants to take that burden of sin, the burden of this world, and lift it up from your shoulders. It's a burden that causes way too much suffering and pain. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 highlights that very well. It says, for the wages of sin is death, separation, eternal separation from God. In other words, the price of sin, what brings about justice for sin is this. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You know, David even pointed out in Psalm 38 and verse 4, he says, my sin is like a burden to me. My sin is like this heavy weight. And that's why I know, oh, you, oh God, you read the rest of the psalm. And he's like, that's why I'm bringing it to you. Because I know that you can help me and lift it from me. 
Here's the thing about Jesus. He's calling to exchange the burden that we can't bear by giving us a new yoke that he calls easy compared to what we once bore. You know, he's calling us to serve, but we work and serve in the strength in which he gives. If we will only give our lives to him, the only time the load ever becomes bearing or overbearing is when we try to take over and we try to do the pulling or handle the load ourselves. And for those of us that are Christians, you know, many of us call ourselves disciples, but really ask yourself, you know, when I look at this passage, he's saying this is what discipleship is. He says, when you, when you come to me and when you give me everything in your life, everything that burdens you, all things, I'm going to give you rest and you will become my disciple and transformed into the image of me. And many of us call ourselves Christian disciple, but do we have that right? You know, ask yourself this. Think about this. You know, we've responded to him as our savior. We've come to him. But when we seek to slip the yoke around our necks to join him, well, we resist, we back off, we refuse, and we truly, you know, we refuse to listen. We refuse to submit to his word and acknowledge his authority. And honestly, it's because it's a struggle to accept his gentleness and goodness. We look at the yoke we have and we convince ourselves that it's not right for us. When in reality, what God has given to us, it's designed perfectly for us. And it's designed to make us like Him. But also because it's made only for you and you. That's it. You know, here's the thing about the yoke that Jesus says, I will give to you. He says, I'm not giving you this burden. I'm not giving you this yoke that's going to be overbearing. He said, what I'm giving you is what you can handle. What I'm giving you is like a breeze compared to what you're doing right now without me. You want to be refreshed? You want to be restored? You may be here this evening, or excuse me, this morning. You may be here this morning, and you may feel exhausted. You may feel tired. You, you may feel absolutely spiritually spent. You may feel as though everything in the world is just bearing down on your shoulders, and you can't carry it any longer. Jesus says, give it to me. Give it to me. And I will give you rest. I will refresh you. I will help you carry on. Because now, I, I, I will, Jesus says, I'll take up my cross and die for sin. But now, here's what I give you. You carry your cross, which is a lot easier than what I have to bear. And follow after me. I'm making your burden lighter and easier. And in doing so, you and I have an eternal rest that's laid up for us. This promise that he's made for you and me. That he says, look, you have this, you have this thing that's awaiting for you. This thing that's called salvation and it's eternal and nobody's going to take that away from you. This thing that I'm not saying I'm going to give it to you. No, not really. That's not the way Jesus works. Jesus says, look, if you come to me and you're willing to serve and you're willing to love and you're willing to find that rest in me. Oh, you just wait for your rest for eternity. This is going to be so much greater. But you've got to come to me first. If you're here this morning, and if you feel tired, stop carrying the burden on your own and give it to Jesus because he can take it away. He can make it lighter. He has the power to do that. If you're here this morning, and if you are a Christian, and you're saying, Paul, I'm starting to feel that burden again, Jesus says, look, I, 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 I carried that burden, but come to me, come back to me, and let me help you. Let me give you strength to carry on, but don't do this without Jesus. If you're here this morning, if there's anything that we can do for you at this time, we encourage you to come forward as together we stand and as we sing.